a long, and uh, it's the first time I will talk about this subject in a hacker conference, so I thank you, EHSN, to give, you, to give me this uh, occasion. And I will talk about uh, reflectometry for wired analysis, which means uh, diagno locate faults or measuring lengths of uh, wires automatically. So it's basical technique, and we, I will try to make today an introduction to many, to several research issues on the basic principle of uh, reflectometry. I will. Um, oops. Uh, okay, I will begin by uh, physics of reflectometry, just for just to know what we are talking about. The principle is very is very simple. It consists in injecting high frequency signal, typically a pulse or anything else, into a wire, which reflects on each singularity of the wire. I mean by singularities, uh, junction end of wire or change in the geometry of the wires. So we get echoes by measuring the voltage and by analyzing, by analyzing echoes, we can know if there are faults corresponding to unexpected efforts, uh, echo or anything. Uh, so why reflectometry? It can be simply for measuring cable length there are sometimes some basic applications in network cards that we find on uh, PCs. But it can be also for security, uh, to for detect accidentally unplugged cable, burned cable in some cases, or stolen cable. I mean, physically stolen cable, uh, cut. It can be also used for to check cable health. So it can be by inverse scattering or other analyzing technique uh, based in general on uh, model modelization of wires. And an application on which I uh, worked a lot is permanent real-time monitoring of cables, uh, online diagnosis. So this is generally embedded in vehicles or any systems to check permanently cables for faults or anything. So how? How the, the reflectometry, the, it's uh, based on propagation of signal in wires. So it's governed by well-known telegraphist equations. There are many theory, uh, mathematical, mathematical theory on it. But today I will try to explain the, the propagation of signals in, in wire in a more intuitive way, just to avoid too many equations. So how signal propagates in wires? Uh, in fact, when you plug a wire uh, to, to a plug, to a voltage source, the, the voltage does not reach the end of the cable immediately. There are many things before it, and, uh, and the wave can propagate from the source to the end of the cable and back, and there can be uh, many uh, travel of wave before reaching a stable state of the voltage in the, in the wire. At the time, when you, plug the, when you plug the wire, the source, the voltage source, see it as a single resistance, uh, as, uh, as shown here. And this resistance is finally what we call the characteristic impedance of the wire. <clears throat> and then, uh, then the voltage is just at the beginning of the cable, and we can modelize the cable as a, as a cascaded... Uh, um, inductance and uh, capacity. So each, each, uh, each cell on this schematic corresponds to an infinitis 
infinitely small uh, piece of the cable, and and um, and it's just a model. And for the real model, there are also a resistance uh, corresponding to loss in the cable because there are loss when the electricity uh, goes in the cable. So when you plug the cable, you have the, the voltage appearing. Then <coughs> the, the voltage wave sees uh, here a 50 ohm resistance. And it propagates like that in the cable, keeping the same value until the end. And when it reaches the end, it's not a 50 ohm, but a 100 ohm resistance. So finally, the values are not right. We can see it like that. Which means, finally, we have 0.66 volts instead of 0.5 and 6.6 .6 milliamps. So it generates a correction wave, which propagates back to the source. And that's how we have a propagation in the wire from the source to the end and back. And then once the, the back wave uh, reach the source, we have reached the stable state of the wire. This case is for matched source, which means we have a 50 ohm resistance in the source. So that's the best case in uh, communication. In communication, we're generally very interesting in matching source and uh, load in the cable because it's avo it avoids many echoes uh, disturbing the, the communication, the integrity of the signal. But we can also just view the case when the source is not matched. For example, we have a 100 ohm um, resistance in the source, and the cable is still 50 ohm as, a, as its characteristic impedance. So it's the same at the beginning, except the value, which, which is uh, now 0 0.33 volts and uh, and uh, sorry, it's 6.6 uh, .6, uh, milliamps. Uh, so the wave propagates. And at the end, it's the same. Finally, we have 100 ohms. So there is a correction wave propagating back. It's the same. We are back. But when we reach the source, there is again a mixed match because the load sees uh, a 50 ohm source because the line is 50 ohm uh, characteristic impedance. So there is the same way, a correction wave, which will propagate to the load and again and again and again until it reaches 0.5 volts in the line. So you can have, uh, like that, an infinite propagation of wave in the, in the wire. So, for example, in such a network, here I take uh, cables with the same characteristic impedance, with here a junction to cables leaving. And if we measure um, by reflectometry here, we get such a, re such a response here. The negative peak corresponds to the junction because uh, here the junction is like you put two resistance in parallel, so it's a less important resistance which generates a negative peak. So this measurement is, uh, is obtained just by injecting a single pulse. Before, I was uh, injecting uh, a step signal because I was just plugging the cable to, to a voltage source. So uh, response can be very complex sometimes, but here, if you, if you want to diagnose such a network, interesting peaks are mainly the, the three, uh, these three peaks because here we have two ends of the, of the cable. But uh, sometimes an analyzing uh, 
the full, uh, the full response can be interesting to know the maximum length of the response. I will talk again about it in sm some slides. So that's the example of a single, uh, single application of time domain reflectometry, which means the reflectometry is performed in time domain by sending directly a uh, signal because there are also frequency domain uh, which are used in uh, network analyzer, but I won't talk about it uh, today. Uh, so the only difference uh, with this result is that we have uh, some sort of square pulse because of the duration of pulse. So it's, uh, it's important to know the, the duration of this pulse for the resolution of location in a network. Uh, here in this example, we have uh, one coaxial cable, 50, 50 ohm, and a twisted pair about, uh, with about 120 ohm. You just have to know that about the characteristic impedance, the more the cable are spaced, the more this impedance is, is high. So, for example, if you, have, uh, if you take the twisted pair and you separate the cable, impedance will increase. So, when impedance increase, you get this positive peak, and then at the end there is an open circuit, so it's an infinite impedance, so it increases it incre it increase again, and we get another positive, uh, positive peak. So, yes, how, uh, now how to use uh, this, uh, this, this result depends on what application uh, you make. If you just want to check integrity of network, you will check that you have two singularities and nothing more. So I will talk uh, about the implementation of the reflectometry. So the principle is very, is very simple, but for example, uh, you can have several issues needing some processing to, to locate efficiently uh, singularities to improve resolutions or anything else. So I will talk about uh, a bit about of, in this processing. And before, on the, an example of F, FPGA platform allowing to, to perform the measurement on this processing. So the basic time domain reflectometer, reflectometer is like that. So you have finally a voltage source. Here I, I give the example of a digital to analog converter, but this can be simply a pulse a pulse generator, it depends on what kind of method you want to, you want to perform. But uh, for the example I showed I, uh, I show before, I shown before, it's uh, a single pulse generator is enough. I will, I will show uh, in some slide why uh, digital to analog converter can be uh, sometimes interesting. Uh, then you, you have here the impedance, uh, the generator impedance, uh, which is best to be matched to the supposed characteristic impedance of the cable you, are, you want to diagnose. Uh, and then here you have the measurement between the, between the, source, gener the source impedance and the cable. Uh, and generally you use also uh, capacity to protect, uh, to protect the system, and it can be also useful to make diagnosis on live systems, so systems we carrying already signals, so capacity are used as a filter. <clears throat> and uh, finally, the voltage measured by the analog to digital converter can be modeled uh, as here, you have the injected signal, uh, which is a slow uh, voltage divider, and here the real response uh, that you are looking for of the cable. So just to know, to have some value 
uh, to see uh, the constraints of the, on the system, because constraints on the, on the measurement system de depends on the length you are diagnosing. For example, uh, here I speak about the round trip of the wave, so the, the time for the wave to go to the fault and to go back. For example, for 100 meters in a coaxial cable, it's typically one microsecond, <clears throat> and it's a bit longer, for example, in a twisted pair. So generally, when uh, characteristic impedance increase, uh, the speed decrease. And uh, the speed um, increase, sorry. Um, and uh, about the characteristic impedance, generally the smaller is uh, 50 ohm, but uh, when you are diagnosing a uh, real cable, such as uh, those one uh, or other cable, you can have uh, more between uh, 100 and 200 ohm. But for example, uh, I don't know exactly uh, imp characteristic impedance of network cable, Ethernet cable, but it's likely to be closer from a coax coaxial cable because, because wires are very uh, straight and uh, it's, um, I tell you, it's clean. It's clean, but uh, such wires are more spaced, so uh, impedance is greater. So here I can show an example um, of what kind of result we get. So here is the pulse we are injecting in the wire, but there is nothing plugged on the source, and for example, if I plug a coaxial cable, so it's a 50 ohm coaxial cable, you see the, you see the pulse reducing to half its size, it's because I've just built a voltage, a voltage divider and you have the end of wire pulse that goes away when okay, some cables are not very healthy, so <laughs> it depends. So, yes. So it's a, simple, it's, a, it's a simple basic application of TDR. So it is made with uh, this platform, made on uh, StratX2 FPGA from Altera. Uh, and some words about uh, this platform. Uh, just general system characteristics of the reflectometry system there is uh, generally the injection period because uh, sometimes you need to make several measurements so you have a period. And what is important in this injection period is the length of all uh, what I call secondary echoes. So just to take the example of it, you have to take all these echoes in considerations to avoid them to be, to be uh, reported on the next measurements, or else you can have uh, too much noise uh, making the measurement uh, very bad. Um, you have also the bandwidth of the system, because uh, if the bandwidth is too low, it decreases, uh, it, um, it's bad for the resolution, you have the sampling, for, uh, of course, and 
generally you can have a different sampling at the emission and at the reception of the signal. Generally, the, the analog to digital converter has a, highest frequency, has a higher frequency for sampling. Uh, the acquisition delay, which depends on the equivalent time something, I will uh, tell some words about it. Uh, mean, you can make mean when uh, you perform measurement in noisy environment and processing delay. And there is also uh, noise immunity, depending on coupling. Uh, pulse compression is a technique used in radar. And uh, the spectrum also on the, of the noise and the injected signal. So this platform is like that. You have a small uh, microcontroller just controlling the, the process, the measurement process. The, more in, the most interesting block is uh, this one, which performs some uh, embedded processing, which are uh, hardwired but uh, in VHDL, but uh, controllable. And uh, the other are just uh, interface uh, with converters to, uh, to buffer the, the signals. Uh, this hardwire uh, DSP block is uh, the DSP unit project. It's uh, now uh, an old project, uh, which is, in fact, interfaced with uh, three memories, uh, allowing to make parallel access to several signals, uh, it, making it uh, quicker for several processing. The principle of uh, DSP unit is to, uh, is to be a toolbox, finally, of operator, hardwired operators. So for example, FFT, uh, dot semul is uh, a complex multiplication uh, dot by dot, uh, and several uh, vector operations, uh, addition, subtraction, uh, a, pap a pipeline uh, divider and other because it's, uh, it can be customized and other, um, other operators can be added. So uh, you use uh, just the microcontroller finally to drive uh, these registers and uh, order some operations and other operations to, uh, to be performed. So that's the, just the example of uh, the control sequence. You have, uh, you have uh, opcode corresponding to each operator, several parameters that are length and offset, for example. And uh, once uh, value are set, you can uh, launch the uh, operation. So, here are just uh, a view of uh, equivalent time sampling, which is a well-known technique used sometimes in uh, oscilloscope, digital oscilloscope. And here we can use it because uh, we control the generation and the acquisition of the signal. So it's very easy to make a measurement on several periods. And the objective of this method is to increase the sampling frequency for the analog to digital uh, converter. So it's simply uh, the clock, the converter clock that you, you shift uh, to get different pieces of the, of the signal at each time. So for example, the first period is blue, the second is green, and so on. So you can get, uh, you can, uh, finally, when you use this method, the only important parameter in the converter is the, the, the bandwidth of the, of the sampler. But uh, you can sometimes make 100 periods like that to multiply by uh, 100 the, the sampling frequency. About the injected test signal, I told about, I told about uh, single pulse, but sometimes it can be interesting to use a different signal. Uh, 
just uh, for the for the single pulse when you when you sample uh, when you are sampling um, quicker than uh, the injection you can use uh, the correlation of the of the pulse signal it allows to get uh, for location the maximum so it can allow a more precise location of faults of fault in a, of fault in the signal. Uh, so this can be obtained by just performing a correlation at the, at the, the reception of the signal. Um, why the test signal is important? It's just because the measurement, the, the measurement, so the, resp the response of the network is convolved with the test signal. So, uh, for example, if it's what you are looking for, so just some single peaks, and you are injected such signal, you will get these results. So, convolution is thus is uh, just uh, copying this uh, pattern and passed it at each uh, echoes finally with an amplitude and a position depending on the echoes. So that's the, that's the mathematical formula of the, of the convolution. But uh, the principle finally is very simple. It's just a copy past of the input signal. But uh, this, can, this can be related to some uh, needed processing to improve resolution. I will uh, show it in a few. Uh, concerning injected signal, uh, there is sometimes a used method. So it's especially when you are performing a measurement in a noisy environment. For example, uh, you are uh, diagnosing uh, such cable when they are powered. You have many noise on it because of, uh, for example, uh, switching, uh, switching power supplies or other phenomenon that, uh, that can disturb your measurements. So uh, to increase the noise immunity, you want to generate to send more energy. But if you, if you inject a single pulse, generally your energy is limited by its amplitude because all the energy is concentrated in time uh, in a single pulse, and the rest of the time, finally, nothing is uh, generated. So it can be very interesting to, to spread the energy over a larger signal, but without losing resolution. So because uh, if you just use a larger pulse, you will lose uh, resolution. So this technique, which is known in radar as pulse compression, consists in just using a, a larger signal, but with specific uh, autocorrelation function. In other words, this signal has the same uh, spectrum of, uh, than, uh, as the pulse. So it allows uh, the same resolution. But, uh, but in time domain, you have just finally to inject this signal, uh, which passes through the network, and then perform a correlation. The correlation is just a filter, uh, just a filter, which is the signal itself. So by passing through this filter, you will pass from it to it. So, for example, here I show these results, which are pulse. But here I'm injecting this signal. Uh, which is generated by the uh, Fourier transform, uh, but I won't, 
I won't uh, tell about details about the generation, but this signal has uh, the, the autocorrelation of this signal is a single pulse. So by injecting this signal, I can, uh, I can get uh, as a result the pulse I showed, uh, I showed before. And the other part is So, after the full correlation of the signal, I get this instead of the corpus uh, I, sh I shown before. So it allows to get maximum. But here the problem is uh, peaks are, are together, so you can, you can well distinguish between, uh, between echoes. So, to... Sorry. So to better distinguish echoes, you have to use, in fact, deconvolution algorithm, which is the inverse operation in signal processing uh, of convolution. So it's an example of uh, processing that can be required in such systems. Uh, as I said, so convolution is just copying a pattern and passing it at each echo. Here I give the example of the clean algorithm, which is a basic algorithm of deconvolution that is used also for image processing. Uh, it is used in uh, astronomy for uh, to for the deconvolution of picture from, uh, from space. So the principle is to uh, work on the correlation, uh, correlation functions and generally this uh, function has just a single maximum as I, sh as I shown uh, with the correlation of the pulse. So in each iteration, this uh, algorithm looks for the maximum of the signal and then subtract the contribution of the found echo. So, in, for example, such signal, for this example, I took signal uh, looking like that, because it's a good example to show deconvolution. And here, the maximum is here, and then at each iteration, you will subtract the contribution of the signal and then get the next maximum. So that way, you can extract peaks of the signal. Like that and like that. So uh, the advantage of this algorithm is uh, you control well the number of peaks. So for example, if you are interested to find uh, interested to find uh, a given number of peaks. For example, you know that you will have four interesting echoes. You can uh, have the, the number of echoes as a parameters of uh, as a parameter of this algorithm. Uh, if you don't use uh, the um, the number of peaks, you can also use just a threshold on the finally the dirty signal, the remaining signal, corresponding, for example, to the noise level or something like that. So it's similar to uh, an algorithm called uh, matching pursuit that we, found, that we find uh, a lot in signal processing. Um, and the drawback of this uh, processing is it's uh, not very robust if the convolution kernel is not exact. Because as it's a subtraction at each, at each time, if you subtract the bad uh, waveform, the, the resulting waveform uh, doesn't fit anything. And 
iteration by iteration, you go, you go anywhere, but not to the correct solution. So in this platform, I embedded the clean algorithm using the DSP unit uh, architecture. And so from this kind of signal, So each time here I just uh, send a new application to the microcontroller driving the, the platform. So this application uses the clean algorithm to, uh, to compute the results. Then I start again capture. So we get, uh, we get more precise peaks. This is the peak of the injected signal, and this is the end of the cable. So this peak is more an error. It's a bit because of the cable, because there is a small misadaptation, uh, because um, we we could see uh, at the beginning that, uh, that uh, there was a small pulse at this place. But this is also because of the clean algorithm. Because when it, uh, it, subtract, uh, it subtract the signal, the amplitude is computed from the max value. But so it's not, it's not always exactly the amplitude of the echo. So sometimes it will subtract too much are not enough. So that's uh, how you can get errors like that. But you can, you can see that anyway, you can use it to, to have more precise echoes, and you can get a more precise distance here uh, than before. There is uh, another method for decovolution, but I will just tell some words about it, but it's more complex because it's, uh, it's a more pure mathematical method, which use what we call uh, in signal processing optimization, which is uh, minimizing given functions. Uh, here, I just try to represent the principle uh, we have, in fact, uh, an, algori an, an algorithm that will uh, minimize this expression, uh, leading to, uh, to fit the measurement signal with an estimation of the network response. Uh, there are two terms in this, uh, in this equation. The first term, the green one, uh, correspond to the similarities between signal. Uh, in fact, it's the energy of the error signal. You have here Y is the measurement, so the acquisition of the analog to digital converter. And H is the unknown vector, so it's the network response. And in fact, S here is a matrix. Uh, representing the convolution of the H with the test signal. So if we find uh, a signal that minimizes this, this expression, this is likely uh, the response that we find. But in fact, this, is, this part is not enough because you have many solutions because uh, finally with convolution you lose many informations. Uh, when it's a problem of bandwidth, for example, you lose high frequency, which corresponds to informations. So if you just try to find a solution with it, you generally get uh, many noise and uh, an impossible uh, result, impossible to exploit. So you add this term, which means I want a solution, but with lots of peaks. So it's based on the fact that finally we want to have a, a result 
which is composed of, uh, of pulse, which correspond to echoes, to singularities. So by adding this, you will, uh, you will uh, get, uh, get uh, you will show more the result with pulse than result with uh, many uh, uh, noise. So why, uh, why this term? So this term corresponds to the sum of absolute value of each uh, component of the H. And we can observe by just uh, training, it on, training it at, on several examples that for the same energy, this, uh, this norm is, is uh, smaller for vector composed of uh, peaks than, for example, uh, if you have uh, just, uh, just uh, um, a point with uh, amplitude 5, you will have uh, a closer value that, um, than if you have, uh, for example, uh, uh, 25 uh, points of amplitude one, because it's the same energy, because the energy of uh, 25 points of amplitude one is 25, and the energy of one point of amplitude five is five uh, squares, so 25. So I won't get into details of the resolution of this, but this can be uh, performed by the FISTA algorithm, which is a fast iterative soft thresholding algorithm. Uh, this algorithm couldn't have been uh, implemented in Dilbert because uh, some operators uh, are missing, but it is possible just to see the result. <clears throat> so here I just get the basic result of the convolution and then I make a post-processing. So in this example, the result is very close, which means that this pulse anyway is uh, is really in the signal, but sometimes you can get better results uh, than the clean algorithm. So sometimes it can be interesting to use uh, this algorithm, which is uh, more complex, so the computation of the result is longer, but uh, in many applications, finally, the clean, the clean algorithm can be, can be enough. It depends if you have many peaks uh, together like here, because of course, if I have a longer distance, if I have a longer distance, I will get a better result. I will get better result. This uh, second echo is just uh, is just because you seen that uh, at the output of the convolution the signal was uh, like that, like that, and like that, and it's uh, the multiple echoes in connectors and uh, at the beginning because there is a, a mismatching pedants at the at the injection point of the cable. <clears throat> so.
So just to see the problem that we can have in performing refractometry. Here it's a coaxial cable, so it's generally quite clean, clean response because uh, the impedance of the cable is generally uh, precise and uh, the cable is uh, homogeneous. But you can get comparable uh, result by, uh, diagnosis, by diagnosing, for example, uh, network cable, Ethernet cable. But in some application, you can need to diagnose other kind, other kind of wires. So like that, for example, a single uh, power wire. So, yeah. No, uh, normally it's possible because here I have uh, two capacity. So it's like finally a CPL communication. You have the same principle. It's a capacitor and, uh, and it filters uh, the high voltage. But I won't try it here because uh, bad idea. OK. <laughs> so I continue this. Yeah. Uh, some security components are missing to do it. Because generally, when you do it, you have also limiter, voltage limiter, and fuse, and yeah, several things like that. Uh, so this is the end of the cable. I can see normally that uh, if I perform a short circuit on the end of the cable, I, I see a negative peak. So that way I can see if there is an open circuit or a short circuit. And I can have a longer cable. But the problem of this cable is that they are lower in bandwidth than, for example, this coaxial cable. So it is still quite clean. But if I go longer, OK, if I go, so first, yeah. So when I uh, move the bit, it's changed. So now you see that uh, before there was a single peak, and now it's two peak. And if you just see the, Result of convolution. You see that uh, the end peak is it. It's really bad. So it's just because it's filtered by the cable. So that's the problem of the cable you are diagnosed. Uh, each cable has a given bandwidth, and the more longer the more long the longer it is. Uh, the more filtered is uh, the signal. So, uh, so you are generally limited in resolution by the cable you are diagnosing. But you see anyway that the clean algorithm allows to have a more precise location. And this algorithm can be really simply implemented on uh, many uh, architecture. So if I try, uh, just the last thing, if I try the L1 deconvolution on it, I will certainly, yeah, I get similar results. But the first peak is a bit higher, so which means it's maybe the, the, most, uh, the most likely to be uh, the end of the cable. So for the location, 
generally an automatic uh, locator will take this bigger peak and compute the distance between this and this. So that's for the demonstration. There are also some other concrete application that I have not here, but on which I more worked uh, in the past. So this is uh, monitoring of uh, cables. So in some contexts that can be a very interesting uh, application. For example, simply you can watch uh, you can watch you can watch electrical fence by this method. So when someone cut the fence, you can automatically detect. Or you can, uh, in a plane, when uh, there is, when, where security is important, you can uh, permanently diagnose wires that can be, for example, burnt or anything. And the problem is quite different in this context because uh, reflectometry is used to detect change in the network and not uh, perform a single measurement as I shown. So generally, it works on different signal. So the difference between the, signal, the faulty signal and the healthy signal. The, the, so we have such results. So for example, here, it's, uh, I took a coaxial cable, then a Y network with a twisted pair. And, uh, here, um, a fault appears um, at, the, at the junction here, a short circuit. And a short circuit at the junction can be, can be difficult to detect because the junction is already a negative peak. So just by looking at the, at the signal like that, you always see a negative peak. So you have to measure the amplitude and that can be um, very difficult sometimes. Here you will detect in real time the apparition of the fault. So here you have the, the difference uh, after and before, and you can get a peak, a first peak corresponding to the, to the fault at zero plus L1. So here you see the the advantage of deconvolution because the measurement result is the, the, dotted, uh, the dotted plot. So you, can see, you just can see anything. But by performing deconvolution, you can extract uh, more precise peaks. And here, the most important peak is always the first because this is the peak of the fault. The others just don't care. So so you can really set your deconvolution or processing algorithm to have a good result on the first peak. So that's the particularities of this application. So I have some other example of uh, measurements. For example, here it's a car network, the, so with uh, lamps. I extract in this, uh, so it's a cable harness. Uh, there are many wires, power wires and communication wires. And I just, as an example, take this uh, Y network. Uh, here, uh, in this example, uh, two reflectometers are, are used to avoid uh, ambiguity. Because uh, when you detect a fault on one reflectometer, you can't know if this is on branch two or branch three. So this uh, can be done in real time uh, using a specific technique known as uh, distributed reflectometry, allowing to inject uh, simultaneously the signal of R1 and R2 uh, without interferences. But it's just uh, coding techniques as in uh, communication. So with this measurement, this example of measurement, 
I had also a fault appearing on the junction here, uh, an open circuit, so the cable just disconnected, and I can see here the result of R1 and R2, giving the pulse locating the, locating the fault. So thank, thanks again to the deconvolution algorithm. So there is just one thing I uh, didn't detail here. It's a red plot, which is uh, obtained by a myopic deconvolution. Just in a few words, uh, myopic deconvolution is uh, an algorithm where the convolution kernel is uh, estimated. Here the convolution kernel is S because I talked about the convolution of the response with the test signal, but you have also other uh, phenomena, such as uh, filtering of the board. You have components on the board uh, filtering the signal, so it's also a convolution. And you have the cable itself. You have many parameters adding, filtering uh, on the signal. So sometimes, the, the myopic deconvolution allows better results by uh, estimating, finally, its own kernel deconvolution. Uh, but it's uh, well suited for this specific application, so working on different signal, because finally, the convolution kernel is not always the same uh, depending on the distance, because as I said, uh, the longer the cable is, the more the signal gets uh, filtered. So, for example, uh, here, you will have uh, a, more, uh, a sharper signal than here. But generally, in different signals, the first peak is one of the biggest, and it's the peak uh, that is interesting. So, uh, in this particular case, myopic deconvolution can give a uh, good result. So, to conclude, so I tried to, to make an introduction to several issues. There are many other issues in reflectometry. And here I talk uh, reflectometry as a wire diagnosis tool, but uh, this term can be found in many fields. Uh, and uh, we see that the principle of reflectometry is very simple, uh, but it can need some uh, processing to improve location, uh, improve noise immunity, as I shown with uh, pulse compression, avoid interferences with other working systems, so sometimes you inject just specific signals to avoid interferences, in fact. So you have to perform deconvolution because uh, these signals are not ideal. Uh, so it's a specific issue of online diagnosis. And uh, sometimes also simplify results. Uh, so various processing can be used. Uh, uh, more advanced processing could be used also to perform, as I said, uh, several injections at the same time, so in distributed reflectometry. And you can also use reflectometry test signal to communicate. So for example, when you are monitoring in real time a network, uh, modules are always injecting a signal, so it can be interesting to use this signal also to carry some information. Uh, but that's uh, future works. And just some references. Uh, so I worked during a PhD thesis on this uh, field. So it's a French PhD thesis. There is also the website of the DSP unit architecture that can be used for other purposes and my website.
Thank you a lot, and I think there will be questions. Uh, yes, it's also possible to use this uh, approach for inspecting, for example, printed circuit courts, uh, printed circuit boards, or smaller uh, objects with sh relatively short wires. Uh, you, you mean uh, optical? Uh, no, no, just uh, a printed circuit board with uh, ah, with, without yeah. components. Yes, yes, this is uh, this is used. Uh, I saw some application. It's a very different application because you are on very small distance, so you have to get very high frequency systems. So it can be very expensive, but yes, it's an application. It's an application, but you can use a network analyzer for such uh, for such. Uh, uh, what sort of resolution is necessary on your ADCs? Oh, uh, in this platform, I have uh, 100 megahertz uh, converters for the injection and the acquisition. So it depends on the length. For example, this platform is made for about 10 meters cable, some meters, but for example, if you are in hundreds of meters, you can have one to 10 megahertz converters. And uh, both uh, DAC and ADC are 100 megahertz, but I use equivalent time sampling for the ADC, so I get finally 600 uh, megahertz. Yeah, yeah, we say, uh, in fact for Equivalent time sampling, I use uh, PLLs in this uh, FPGA, so other techniques are available, but uh, it's very simple in FPGA. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so uh, thanks for your talk. <laughs> One question? Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, um, so why do you actually need an FPGA? You didn't cover that in your talk, right? Why an FPGA? Yeah. You mean what else? You have to, uh, what's, what's the, the purpose of the FPGA? Um, I thought you do it on your laptop, the processing. So what part of the processing you can do on the FPGA? No, not for this application because everything is very fast. So the processings are not very complex but uh, you have to perform it here in, in real time. This platform was made to experiment online diagnosis, in fact, and in online diagnosis, you have many real time uh, processings made, so FPGA is really required. So you can do this, uh, anyway, you can do this on a, on a PC. On maybe for longer networks, so lower frequencies, you can use sometimes uh, microcontrollers, fast microcontrollers, but uh, yeah, it depends on the application. So I understand that you evaluate the health of the in-car system wiring uh, in real time. Uh, is that right? Uh, I. I, uh, yeah, with online diagnosis, I, I perform measurements several times by second, uh, so 100, uh, So one, you know uh, when a wire is broken, when the yeah, car yeah, is running. Yeah. And, and sometimes uh, online this? diagnosis can be also to detect, uh, can be also used to detect uh, uh, temporary faults. So fault that appears, for example, just for some milliseconds. So you just have a change and it goes back to the normal state. Transient. Yeah, yeah, transient, transient. And it's, uh, for example, it's for the, uh, what in-car bus do you, do you target this for? Uh, it's for, uh, this is a special kind of application, for example, used in planes. Uh, to detect uh, arcs, for example, you can you can have uh, in voltage 
in a power supply network. Induction, hmm? induction from power supplies? Uh, yeah, induction. You can have arcs, you know, uh, arcs that appear, uh, arc, yes. And, uh, and uh, you can detect this by uh, reflectometry. So it's, uh, it can also be fitted in cars for ca with the CAN bus, so for example? No? Yes, 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 yes. There are applications for such, uh, such uh, yeah, CAN bus, yeah. Okay, anyone else? So thanks again for your talk. And now Florian has some advices for you for urban food hunting, I think. Yeah, not only that. So uh, first we have to break from uh, one to two again. Uh, so you have to hurry a bit and to save you some fuss in finding, finding uh, the, uh, the places to go. Um, we made up a small list of open locations. Uh, I just learned that Schweinske apparently is not open, although they told me otherwise some days ago. Uh, so there is an Indian restaurant nearby, there is the Tiergartenquelle at the Espanhof uh, Tiergarten down the street in that direction. Um, and the others are linked here. Um, they should all be nearby. Ooh, what's that? Obviously they have an ad on their, on their website, sorry. Hmm, maybe they got hacked. So, this is uh, the Kono Bar, and we are about here. They really have a lot of ads on their website. Interesting. Um, so just go on the website or ask at the, uh, at the cash desk. Uh, the other thing is, after the break, we have uh, the Arduino workshop at 2 o'clock. Um, this is not held by... Um, the original uh, plant person. Uh, Tomek is uh, making this in replacement um, for kids and other beginners. This is the workshop. And then we have a touch unit BSD talk and uh, some more hardware related things afterwards. And I think we should give a big round of applause to the streaming team up there. Um, we asked them to help us with their experience, and now they are here in person, even bringing their own hardware and setting up a second camera for the stream of the, of the Beamer picture, so thank you. <laughs> and I hope to see you soon in one hour, recreated, and uh, with good food in your stomach, and see you then. <laughs>